Winter Story by Jill Barklam. It was the middle of winter. The sun had just set and it was very, very cold. An icy wind was blowing from the east and the wind promised snow. Deep in the dark roots of Brambly Hedge, tiny lights appeared as lamps were lit in the windows. More little lights could be seen leaving the store stump moving hastily along the hedgerow and disappearing into holes hidden in the twisty roots. The mice had smelled snow in the air and were all hurrying home to a nice hot supper by the fire. Mr. Apple, warden of the store stump, was the last to leave for home. By the time he reached Crab Apple Cottage, the first flakes were beginning to fall. Is that you, dear? called Mrs. Apple as he let himself in through the front door. Delicious smells wafted down from the kitchen. Miss Apple had spent the afternoon baking pies, cakes, and puddings for the cold days to come. She drew two armchairs up to the fire and brought in their supper on a tray. There was a lot of noise coming from the hornbeam tree next door. The Toad Flax children had never seen snow before. It's snowing! It really is snowing, squeaked the two boys, Wilfred and Teasel. They chased their sisters, Clover and Catkin, round the kitchen with pawfuls of snow scooped from the windowsill. Supper time, called Miss Toadflax firmly, ladling hot chestnut soup into four small bowls. After supper, the children were sent off to bed, but they were far too excited to sleep. As soon as the grown-ups were safely occupied downstairs, they climbed out of their bunk beds to watch the snowflakes falling past the window. Tobogganing tomorrow, said Wilfred. Snow pancakes for tea, said Clover. We'll make a snow mouse, said Catkin. And I'll knock it down, said Teasel, pushing the girls off their chair. Next morning, the mice along the hedgerow woke to find their windows half blocked by snow. Mrs. Apple had to stand on tiptoes on the kitchen table to see out. And what a sight met her eyes. The fields were covered with a thick, white blanket of snow, and all the paths and plants had disappeared beneath it. When the Toad Flax family went down to breakfast, they found the kitchen dark and still. Mrs. Toad Flax put fresh wood on the fire and set Clover to work with the toasting fork. Soon they were all sitting round the table, eating hot buttered toast, drinking blackberry leaf tea, and making plans for the day ahead. The snow was thicker than the mice had expected. All the downstairs windows along the hedgerow were covered with snow, and many of the upper ones, too, were hidden in deep drifts. The mice leaned out of their bedroom windows to wave and call to their friends. Enough for a snowball, wouldn't you say? called Toad Flax to Mrs. Apple. A snowball? echoed the little mice gleefully. Every family along the hedgerow kept shovels, maps, and ropes in a special cupboard by the front door. And after breakfast, the mice dug tunnels from tree to tree, linking them all to the store stump. Teasel and Wilfred were sent down to help but they soon found that it was much more fun to throw snow at each other, and so were sent home again. Lord Woodmouse dug his way through to old Mrs. Eyebright and helped her to light a fire. I haven't seen snow like this since I was young, she sighed. The last snowball was held in the year Mr. Eyebright and I were married. I'm the only one left who could remember it now. When the tunnels were finished, all the mice gathered noisily in the store stump hall. Mrs. Apple took some seed cake from the cupboard and prepared a jug of acorn coffee. The mice helped themselves and gathered round Mr. Apple, who held up a paw for silence. Lord Woodmouse and I have agreed, he said when they were quiet, that we should follow in the tradition of our forefathers. He cleared his throat nervously, straightened his whiskers, and recited, When the snows are lying deep, when the field has gone to sleep, when the blackthorn turns to white, and frosty stars bejewel the night, when summer streams are turned to ice, a snowball warms the heart of mice. 
Friends, I declare that a snowball will take place at dusk tonight in the ice hall. Where's that? whispered Clover, as the mice clapped and cheered. Wait and see, replied Mrs. Apple. You come home with me and help prepare the feast. There was a deep drift of snow banked against the store stump, and the elder mice, after discussion, declared it to be just right for the ice hall. Mr. Apple dug the first tunnel to check that the snow was firm. It's perfect, he called back from the middle of the drift. The mice picked up their shovels, and the digging began. The snow was dug from inside the drift, piled into carts, and taken down to the stream. Wilfred and Teasel helped enthusiastically, but they were sent home again when Mr. Apple caught them putting icicles down Catkin's dress. The middle of the drift was carefully hollowed out. Mr. Apple inspected the roof very thoroughly to make sure that it was safe. Safe as the store stump, he declared. All the kitchens along Brambley Hedge were warm and busy. Hot soups, Punches and puddings bubbled, and in the ovens pies browned and sizzled. Clover and Catkin helped Mrs. Apple string crab apples to roast over the fire. The boys had to sit and watch because they ate too many. It's not that I mind, dears, but we must have some left for the punch. The glowworms were put in charge of the lighting. Toad flax fetched them early from the bank at the end of the hedge for Mr. Apple had insisted that they should have a good supper before their long night's work began. By tea time, the hall was finished. The ice columns and carving sparkled in the blue-green light, and the polished dance floor shone. Tables were set at the end of the hall, and eager cooks bustled in from their kitchens with baskets of food. The children decorated a small raised platform with sprays of holly, while Basil, the keeper of the hedgerow wines, set out some chairs for the musicians. When all was done, the mice admired their handiwork and went home to wash and change. As muffs and mufflers were left at the door, it was clear that all the mice had dressed up for the grand occasion. Wilfred and Teasel crept under a table to watch, and every now and then a little paw appeared and a cream cake disappeared. Basil struck up a jolly tune on his violin, and the dancing began. All the dances were very fast and twirly, and were made even faster by the slippery ice floor. Wilfred and Teasel whirled their sisters around so quickly that their paws left the ground. I don't feel very well, said Clover, looking rather green. Mrs. Apple stood on a chair and banged two saucepan lids together. Supper is served, she called. The eating and drinking and dancing carried on late into the night. At midnight, all the hedgerow children were taken home to bed. As soon as they were safely tucked up, their parents returned to the ball. Basil made some hot blackberry punch, and the dancing got faster and faster. The snowball went until dawn. The musicians were tired. The ice columns began to drip. The sleepy mice could dance no more. They wandered home through the snow tunnels, climbed the stairs, and crept into their warm beds. Outside the window, the snow had started to fall again, and every mouse in Brambley Hedge was fast asleep.